We have been able to explain color with crystal field theory. Now we want to also explain magnetism uh, using the same tools as crystal, of crystal field theory that pretty much is an electrostatic model in which you approach a bunch of ligands around the metal and the d orbitals that had the same energy split into typically two or more levels and that explains color but we want to explain magnetism now. So let's remember a little bit what magneti magnetism is. Uh, magnetism typically in substances implies unpaired electrons so that's the most important um, take-home message. It's unpaired electrons, however, in, in substances, even though substances may have unpaired electrons and each molecule can be seen as a tiny magnet where the, each of those molecules have a specific direction where the electron is pointing, unless there is an external magnetic field, those little magnets, those molecules, do not point to any specific direction. However, if you apply a magnetic field, so typically if you apply magnetic field B is typically the sign for for a magnetic field those molecules with unpaired electrons will align and will create a little magnet if you will and that little magnet of course therefore will be attracted by the magnetic field and in this case when there are unpaired electrons we call these substances paramagnetic paramag excuse my spelling uh, paramagnetic there's one specific kind of paramagnetic substances that even when you remove this magnetic field the alignment of of these molecules remain and they're called permanent magnets or if you will ferromagnetic substances because typically um, if you remove your magnetic field it means that the alignment of molecules will go back to the random distribution. So that's a little bit the molecular explanation for magnetism. We, it's a little bit more complicated than that as for why it is that some iron, cobalt and nickel solids show this ferromagnetic character in which the alignment of, of their atoms follows, um, is, is not, uh, does not go back to the random distribution. But uh, so far, this is good enough for us to explain the properties of, of transition metals. So, let's remember again that a paramagnetic substance is a substance that is attracted by a magnet because it has an unpaired electron, and a diamagnetic substance, it has paired, paired electrons, and therefore, uh, it is not attracted. It's even a little bit of um, repulsed by by a, a magnet. But so how can we explain that in terms of our octahedral complexes? So imagine that you have to place six electrons in your octahedral complex. So you have an octahedral octahedral complex and this could typically be a cobalt 3 plus. It's a D6 with six ligands. Okay, so that it's octahedral. You can place the six electrons in two different ways you can pack them all down here in which you would say that you're following Aufbau principle in which you start filling up the lower level of molecular orbitals uh, before you move to the next level. However, notice that the same six electrons could be placed in a way that follows Huhn's rule in which it tries to maximize the number of unpaired electrons with parallel spins. Even though it's the same Elect the same number of electrons, six, uh, depending on the distance between the two sets of d orbitals, now uh, not degenerate anymore, uh, it will be diamagnetic or paramagnetic. And as we learned in our previous video, the distance between these two sets of d orbitals strongly depends on the ligand. So this is what you may see sometimes as for iron and remember, so iron 3, iron 3 should be, did I say, was it D6? Hmm, I'll check that. Um, in this case, if you have six electrons, uh, you have to place six electrons following Aufbau rule. Well, why? Uh, you may think that cyanide being on the uh, spectrochemical series, remember that cyanide was followed by ammonia, and here you had CO. You don't have to memorize this. It doesn't hurt to... And then you had chlorine and 
iodine, etc. The, the more to the right the ligand is, the larger the gap will be. In this case, it makes sense that this complex, iron excess ionide, is diamagnetic. It's also lo called low spin complex because it has, the, uh, it has no unpaired electrons. However, if instead of cyanide you choose water, the gap between these two sets of d orbitals is smaller and therefore the price that the electrons need to pay to be up here is smaller and we can say that Pauli um, and actually and Huns rule right Huns, Huns rule wins uh, in here the large gap between these two sets of orbitals is too large, the electrons would rather be paired, it results in a diamagnetic um, coordination complex, complex. However, if the gap is small enough, it will be paramagnetic. Notice that you do not have the quantitative tools to decide, well, which ligand is going to make it paramagnetic or diamagnetic. You cannot predict that, but at least you can explain, so it's it could be so what how about iron how about this one is it paramagnetic or diamagnetic you do not have the tools to know at which of these ligands there is the transition in which the electrons would rather be all paired in the lower level okay so uh, but at least you, you should be able to explain it the remember the notation this is called low spin when all the electrons would rather be paired because the gap between the two sets of the orbitals is too large and the high spin is when the electrons would rather be spread according to Huhn's rule so that um, yeah so that Huhn's rule is, is maximized okay so notice that this duality of cases is only possible for a set number of electrons only when you have four octahedral only when you have four five six or seven you can have a low or high spin situation depending on the ligand so let's try to draw what kind of a distribution of um, distribution of electrons we would have it when you have four five six or seven electrons the low spin and it would be if it's octahedral the split is always the same and the high spin The high spin would be, I'm going to write it here, okay, that doesn't change. Now, if you have four electrons, the low spin would be one, two, three, and four. That's for four. The high spin would be one, two, three, and four. This would be for small gap, a small split, and this would be for large split, okay? Notice that the color would still be, uh, um, you would still explain the color in the visible range as a transition between these two. It does, in this case, it's not between the HOMO and the LUMO because the HOMO is up here and the LUMO is way all the way up here and this jump falls into the UV. So you would still split, uh, be able to explain um, the um, visible color, the color that uh, human eye is sensitive to just by transitions between these even though this is not the HOMO down here so keep that in mind. For D5 I'm just gonna write it again just to make sure that you can see the duality. For low spin if you need to place five electrons one two three four five five okay and in here it's one two three four five Notice that when you have D5, you have the maximum number of unpaired electrons and therefore maxim, the maximum attraction by a magnetic field. The more unpaired electrons you have, the more paramagnetic character you have. So for six electrons, this would be a low spin and this would be, sorry, yes, the high spin. For, and for seven, this would be the low spin. And notice that even though it's low spin, it's paramagnetic. So D7 is paramagnetic. Oops, really my magnetic is paramagnetic both in low spin 
and high spin. So what we drew here, careful, the low spin is not always diamagnetic. In this case it is diamagnetic, but low spin just means that the outbound principle is more important than than the uh, Huhn's rule. So we were uh, placing seven electrons. This is seven electrons on the left and in here we have six down here. There you go. Uh, that still, it, the high spin still has more unpaired electrons for D7. Okay. Um, and notice that for D8 there is no there is no possible configuration because when you have to place eight electrons, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's no more duality, and this is why when you have four, five, six, or seven electrons, you will have this dual possible behavior depending on the ligands, that is depending on the gap between the two sets of d orbitals.